Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class. And this is number eight in our Permission to Play video series featuring simple card sketches. And this sketch I'm calling Elevated Edge. It's very similar to the sketch that we did for video number three. So make sure you check out the playlist if you haven't seen the other videos. But what we're doing to switch it up a little bit is just adding a die cut edge to that panel on the right hand side. So before we get started, what this permission to play video series is all about is giving yourself permission to just enjoy your hobby. Letting yourself know, and I need to remind myself of this too, that it's okay to make simple cards. It's okay to do the same sketch or card layout over and over as long as you're still enjoying it. It's okay to mix old and new products, to be creative and not productive, so to kind of do things assembly line style, and to not compare your cards to other people's cards because your recipient recipients don't do that and it steals your joy. Now three hacks for simple cards you'll be proud of are to use embossing folders, quality images, and strong colors. And we'll be doing that in all three of the cards that are featured with this sketch today. So as you can see, this sketch has a very um, unique border along that panel and then some embossing behind that. And you can put whatever you want then over on that right hand side. So I have pre-prepped my um, sort of card sketches for all 10 of these videos actually all at once and I have a prep video I'll link it down below if you haven't seen that um, just to show you how I do that in advance and what I've done I've done my embossing with penny black embossing folders on white cardstock and colored cardstock and then I have just die cut using penny blacks border collection die that edge along the side. That's a great die for doing that die set because it gives you some variety and it's long enough to do slimline cards too. Now I'm going to stamp my images onto Canson 140 pound cold press watercolor paper using Ranger archival ink in the color of watering can. I'm stamping in the Misty stamp positioning tool because that paper has some texture to it. So this just lets me stamp it multiple times and I did a whole stamping session. So on all those that I had prepped, I stamped these penny black images. The girl is from the um, special blend set. The boy is from the little guy set. And then I have our dignified and flower family die cut from that watercolor paper. Now, just a reminder, we have an ebook available for this whole permission to play video series. You can get the sketches and the card ideas all in one place. So if you'd like to purchase that, I'll link it for you down below. And I thank you for your support. Now that I've done all of my stamping, I'm ready to color my images. Now you can do this whatever way you love to do. I have permission to play with whatever you love to color in your images. Or you could die cut just from colored cardstock. You wouldn't even have to use stamps and paints or Copics or colored pencils. It's all about whatever you like. I'm using Distress reinkers used as watercolors. I had those on my palette. I also have a cup of water and a paper towel handy. I've all folded up the paper towel and I press my memento toffee ink pad onto an acrylic block just to be able to pick up that color of ink that I am painting the little girl with. It's just a very light tan that doesn't get a yellowish tint to it. So I find I reach for that often in addition to those reinker colors. Now I have stamped this with that archival ink so it gives it a, like a lighter the color than just a jet black. Um, and I like that because once these strong colors go on top, the outlines, the illustration kind of starts, I think, to visually recede a little bit and it just looks like a hand painted image, like it's just been sketched out, just very loose and fun and I think it adds to that sort of storybook charm of the images, more of a storybook feeling than a coloring book feeling, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Now, if you want to have more information about how my, my watercoloring process, I will link a video for you that goes much slower and in more detail down below. But I am basically just picking up that Distress Reinker ink off the palette. That's when it is most concentrated, the most dark. Putting it down where I want it to be most dark on my image. Then off camera, I'm rinsing off my brush in the water patting it on the paper towel and then going back and blending that out to a lighter color. Now as I said in the beginning a hack for making simple cards that you're proud of that feel finished and don't look so simple is to use strong images and 
for example, the, all of Penny Black stamps are done by really talented illustrators. And this one too, of course. And so no matter how you color this in, even like right here, I've just done a flat wash of yellow across that dress. It looks great because the illustration is great. So if you're making simple cards or you want to simply color things in, go for really quality images like these from Penny Black and some strong colors. Now if you like to add some shading like I'm going to do here, I am just, I painted a flat wash of scattered straw yellow on there. Then I picked up some barn door distress ink reinker and put it where I want the color to be the darkest. And I just picked wherever that dress was kind of folding up a little bit at the sleeve, there by behind that bow and where those sort of crease lines are that the illustrator put there for me. And then I just blended that out into the yellow. And that just sort of oomphed up that color, which I think adds to a simple design. So I'll just continue painting this in. Now this sketch is really great whether you're doing more elegant cards, floral cards, cute cards, kid cards, critter cards because that border collection die from Penny Black is, um, I would say sort of neutral enough that it doesn't look too fancy and it doesn't look too cutesy, that you can prep it in advance and then no matter what stamp or die you pick, it will look nice with it. I also like that there's several options in there. So if you wanna mix it up, but follow the same sketch you can, keeps things interesting. But if you just wanted to even tear that edge, and I would do it before I painted, <laughs> but tear that edge along that left-hand side, then that would um, also just elevate that edge a little bit. Just give it a little bit more um, to it, a little bit more design. This stamp is, like I said, from the Special Blend. Um, stamp set. It's a new one from Penny Black and um, if you haven't looked at it, it is really really fun. There's this image in it which again you can see is a nice sized stamp because this card is four and a quarter by five and a half inches so you get an idea there of the size of that stamp and there's another one with these little girls um, like out to coffee with their dressed up with their sort of like pretend play purses. It's really great, um, great fun for a friendship card. But this sketch you could do with old, with new, with die cuts, any anything. And that's what I love about these simple sketches. You can prep them in advance and then whatever you're in the mood to stamp or color, you can get that out. Now I did emboss for that left hand side colored cardstock in advance so what I do when I do that then is when I'm painting my images I will try to pick at least one of those colors to have in my stamped image and then you get a nice balance of the color and the embossing on the left and then the image on the right or you can just emboss in white which I think it's this card that I use the white embossed edge with and then your options are totally open. You could paint it or ink it after the fact if you wanted, but just that texture there along that one little border on the left-hand side adds a lot to the card. Embossing folders make, for me, simple cards so easy. And these Penny Black embossing folders that I've been using throughout this entire series, again, I feel like they kind of fall in that neutral category where you can do them in advance and no matter what stamp or die you're gonna pick, they're gonna go with it. So again, just having so much fun painting in this stamp. There's so many different color variations you could do with it. I love when there's like a little dress like this to paint. I think then you could you could stamp this and make four cards using this sketch with the same stamp and have fun just changing up your color scheme. I think that dress would look so cute, just white with multicolored polka dots on it, or you could do like all blue polka dots or 
there's just so many different ways that you could um, color or paint this in. So for me, a variety of stamps keeps thing, like keeps me motivated, keeps me excited. So and also a mix of old and new. So sometimes the new are what pull me in there to get started, but then I love going through my stash and pulling out older stamps to use. Penny black stamps never go out of style. I really think they are timeless. And so it's a great match with either trying to use from your stash or follow along with sketches, especially if you've prepared them in advance. So I'm just drawing this as I go so I don't have any colors um, blending into each other. And add a little bit of weathered wood, watered down, so there's quite a bit of water on my brush when I pick that up out of the palette. That makes it less concentrated and makes it lighter, but just to ground them there so they aren't floating on the card. find any places here that I have missed and then once that's totally dry I'm just gonna go in and paint those polka dots so I didn't want to have to paint around each one <laughs> and so I was able to paint a lighter color for the dress and then go back in with a darker related color so the red is close enough to the orange and the yellow I could put it right on top and all of the exact colors I'm using ink pads, distress-free inkers, used as watercolors, everything, my paintbrush, all of that is listed for you down in the YouTube description box below. And all of the Penny Black products, including the embossing folders, die cuts, stamps, all of that is listed and linked for you down in the YouTube description box below. So try to get everything there for you so if you have any questions you can find the information that you want right away. Now I went back and played with this balloon far too much. I don't know, I just fiddled and fiddled and fiddled <laughs> with it and then some of it kind of bled out a little bit on that bottom corner which drove me a little bit crazy but I had painted so much already, I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> I'm not starting over and that's okay. If you have a little spot on your card, either put a butterfly there or a sentiment or just leave it and move on because whoever gets your card is not going to be even looking at that. I have to remind myself of that sometimes. Now here is our layered bloom die cut and I'm going to go ahead and paint that. So you can use this sketch with stamps or die cuts, cute or elegant, kids or critters, whatever you want. It's that, it's that simple. It gives you a lot of flexibility. I painted the bottom part of that bloom with barn door. Then I'm going in and adding some scattered straw and rusty hinge. So on this one I'm going to kind of bring the colors of the bloom, just some variety to those colors. Then on this little piece of painter's tape is the third piece of this die cut. It's really easy to put together. It's so pretty, really elegant. And I'm doing that with the scattered straw. So I'm kind of going red to orange to yellow, which creates a fun look. And then this is the dignified creative die. And this, as you've seen me paint it and use it I don't know if I maybe used it on almost all in almost every video maybe not all but almost um, super versatile you can use it all as one piece or you can trim you know little stems off little leaves off to use individually so make it fit whatever you have going on I'm painting that with some peeled paint distress ink reinker used as watercolor And then I'll put some forest moss just to darken it up. And I'm putting that mainly on the stem area and I'm putting it on while it's still wet so it'll sort of bleed and blend with that first color that I put on. So just continuing to play with the paints on there. Always fun to do with die cuts. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment. So again, I'm continuing to work sort of in that assembly line style. Everything's painted. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my sentiments. And that um, 
special blend set has some really fun sentiments. I also added a die cut sentiment on there just for a little extra something and that card is complete. Now for the other card with the flower, this is my um, card stock that I embossed with Penny Black's variegated embossing folder and I'm just putting a little bit of distress ink on top using an ink blending tool and a foam pad. I'm using some rusty hinge to match up with the flower petals that I painted and I'm even putting a little bit of that on top of the flower petal. I felt like it dried a little bit lighter than I wanted it to be and so I'm just going in and putting some ink on top once it was dry and I'm just kind of curling that ever so slightly with my fingers before I assemble the flower. This is that layered bloom die cut. I love this flower. I've made so many cards with it. Super easy to color and put together. You can do any color you want on it. So I'm just assembling that. And you can see I could match up that embossed strip that's going to show with my focal point image very easily. So here are the completed cards. This one I've got that white embossing on the left hand side. This one I love how this card turned out. This is from the little guy, a new stamp set from Penny Black. And then here is that floral card. So again you can go from cute to elegant using the same sketch. So here I will have still shots of all three cards that we created today. I thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone's kind and encouraging comments. I read them all and thank you so very much. Be sure that you subscribe. We still have two more videos to go in this video series. So hit the bell notification so you get an email every time a new one uploads. You won't miss them then. And you can continue to connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as Instagram website and our blog. And everything is linked for you down below. Happy stamping!